So back with another video about autopilot, testing it, putting it to its limits. And I wanted to start off with a near accident that happened and autopilot saved me. So I was just driving along, looking in the left mirror and as I was watching the car come up on my left hand side, you can see that everybody else in front of me is like starting to split. One person veers to the left and the car automatically slowed me down. Uh, it doesn't look that bad because this is a wide angle lens. It was a lot closer than it looked like and I was very grateful for autopilot. So anyways, we're going 500 miles in this autopilot test. It was 250 miles of the interstate from Spanish Fork, Utah to St. George, Utah, and then back. My goal in this test was to basically intervene or take over as little as possible. So I play this at 35 speed, uh, just so you can see what's going on. I tried to go a little faster because I wanted to save time for you guys, but any faster than 35 speed, it started to look kind of blurry and jumbled. So I just decided to opt for a little bit slower. So if you wanna get the stats, I'm gonna put stats halfway through the video and I'll leave a timestamp down below in the description. And then at the very end of the video, I'll go ahead and leave stats for the, the entire trip there and back. One thing that I wanna note is that the car is doing a great job with keeping between the lanes in general, but it does this ping-ponging effect. So currently I have hardware 2.5, which I've mentioned in a previous video, and I have software version 2020.4.1. These two together make the car do what's called ping-ponging. So it'll stay between the lanes, but it just goes slowly back and forth. And you can actually see it if you look at the little image of the car on the bottom left. So here I wanna mention what we call autopilot jail. So I'm going with the flow of the traffic. I don't feel like I'm really going that fast. As you can see, I speed up here and there's a car behind me. That's why I sped up because yeah, I wanted to pass this guy and apparently when you go a certain over 90 miles an hour, this uh, puts you in autopilot jail. It turns autopilot off completely and you can see this car's coming up. I'm going 92, 93 here. He's going like 100 miles an hour. The car shut off autopilot if you look, the blue steering wheel or the gray steering wheel is gone. I can't even try to turn autopilot on yet. So that actually messed with the statistics on this trip because I was testing the distance on autopilot and off autopilot. So you see me take the exit, I get off, um, I put the car in park, and then I can use autopilot again. And I will admit that I did cheat a little bit. So take all the stats at the end with a bit of a grain of salt. I had navigate on autopilot turned on. I tried to listen any time that it told me to change lanes, but I didn't let it automatically change lanes. And honestly, when it does auto change lanes, sometimes it doesn't speed up as quick as I'd like it to. So it'll take a spot which it had space for, but then the car coming up is coming up faster than I'm going. So I would accelerate myself and sometimes I felt like that was just cheating because the car could have done it. I just didn't want to upset anybody else um, and I wanted to keep my flow going. So that's just my disclaimer. The car could have done it. It just wouldn't have been as smooth of a transition. Another thing the car struggles with, which I actually think got worse with this last update is these lanes when they merge in, as soon as the dash lines stop for the merging lane, the car now sees that the lane is really big and it tries to center on that really big lane and then it moves over and it overcorrects and the ping-ponging is even worse when it comes to centering on that new lane.
So here we get to Beaver, and just a side note, Beaver used to be four stalls, and it's now eight stalls. That was just a recent renovation. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful that they did this because when I arrived, we were, I think, the sixth car to arrive, and then we got out and went about, and by the time we got back, there were eight cars, so all eight stalls were full. And this was on a Friday evening. As you can see here, I'm pulling only about 68 to 70 kilowatts, and I wanted to go a little quicker, so I get in the car, I move over a few spots to the very end, and you'll see that I pull quite a bit more energy. I think it was 140 something, 144, 100, yeah. But either way, it cut off five minutes of the charge time. So this stop was a total of 18 minutes. The place we stopped at has a little Dairy Queen inside, so we got a burger and the car was ready to go by the time we were. So when people tell me that stopping for 15 minutes or so every few hours is too much, I try to put that in perspective of, if you're gonna go to the bathroom and grab a bite to eat, you're probably stopping for about 15 minutes anyways. All right, so here we are about to take our exit. Again, this test is just for freeways. Since Autopilot is not designed for city streets yet, I didn't think that was fair to include. So here are the stats for the first leg. Um, I took over for the first time at 63.9 miles. It was 0.1 miles that I drove off Autopilot. Second was right after that at 64 miles. I was right next to a truck. I had turned on autopilot and it felt like it was trying to center but too aggressively so it moved over to the left and there was a car coming up on my left hand side. So I disengaged there. The third takeover was at 75.3 miles in and that was where I went too quick and it put me in autopilot jail for 4.4 miles. And then my last one was at 136.9 miles in um, and that was 0.2 miles off of autopilot. So exit to exit was 251 miles, 4.8 miles off of autopilot, 246.2 miles on autopilot for a total percentage of the drive of 1.9% off of autopilot and 98.1% on autopilot. Now the way back did much, much better. Honestly, you can just skip to the very end I had one time that I took over at 87.8 miles in, um, and that was it. The weather was pretty crappy on the way back. I was surprised at times that autopilot was even working with how hard it was raining. I couldn't see the cars in front of me, but I could see them visualized on the screen, and I was just super impressed with how autopilot did.
get to our first stop in Beaver. Uh, as you can see, the video cuts out for just a second. It's not because of anything that happened with autopilot. It was because we got to our destination and there's a, a creamery. So we should have turned left to go to the superchargers. We turned right to go to the creamery and just enjoy some, some ice cream there. And then I skipped over to when we plugged in. It was a little bit longer of a stop because all the stalls were full and I was paired up with somebody else. Um, I don't think I got faster than about 50 to 60 kilowatts. So had I been getting the full speed, this would have been a much shorter stop, but I decided to take some time and watch the final episode of The Office. Not sure why the coloring looks weird on the camera, but good finale. So moving on, I start the trip odometer again and we have at it. We go 150 miles home and the only things that I did were turn the blinker on and push the accelerator a couple times to make lane changes a little bit smoother for the cars around me as well. Stats for the way back, 250.9 miles on autopilot, 0.1 miles off. That means that autopilot was on for 99.96% of the distance, or 0.04% of the distance off. One thing that videos really can't put into perspective is that autopilot really gets rid of driver fatigue. Um, yes, it has its struggles and it makes mistakes, by no means would I call autopilot perfect. Obviously, I have my own issues that I have with it, and I really hope that Tesla can fix those issues pretty quick. But in the grand scheme of things, I drove 502 miles on the interstate, and less than five miles were off of autopilot. Um, I took over a total of five times, meaning that autopilot did 99 plus percent of the work on the freeway. To break it down, it breaks down to about every hour and 15 minutes or so, I had to take over at one point. So that's it. Uh, please let me know if there's anything specific you wanna see in the next autopilot test. Please let me know if there's anything I can do better. If you like this video, please give it a like. If not, you can push dislike. It helps me to know what people want to watch and it helps me to know what people like watching. Uh, please subscribe. We are a smaller channel and we do appreciate and notice every subscription. Other than that, thank you as always for watching. Thank you for the support and we'll see you in the next one.